One of the really interesting functions in OneNote that I think most people have overlooked is the live captions. Now, in order to make this work properly, you need to be able to have access to a Microsoft Translator. So I'm going to demonstrate using my phone because I think that's the simplest option, but I'm going to show you another little trick with that as well too. Okay. So on my phone, I have the Microsoft Translator app. Great little app, by the way, if you ever need it, you can actually take pictures of signs and it will translate the text on the sign for you. You can speak into it and have it translate. So it's a really handy function to have whenever you're working with um, people with other languages, maybe there's a, a language barrier. I'm going to show you a really interesting function that does not have to do with translation, although it can have the translation function. But when I was using it, it was mostly actually just for captioning. So let me show you what happens. So I'm going to go into my class notebook. It could be in a regular notebook as well, but in my class notebook, I click on view and under view, there is this live captions. And when you click on it, I'm in the online version. Um, you'll see the little panel open up on the right hand side and it will do this little spinning thing and then eventually it will come up and ask you for a code and your captions language. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go into my Microsoft Translation app and there's this button with two people on it. So I'm going to click on that and it's going to ask me if I want to join a conversation or start a conversation. So I'm going to click on start and it asks me my name which I already have in here, but you could type in your name and language. In this case, what language am I speaking? So English in this case, so I'm going to hit enter. Once it's done that, it's now going to give me a QR code and a five letter code at the top. Now it's the five letter code that's important. So you can give this to students. So I'm just going to type in the code here. D I H I Q. Perfect. Okay. And I'm going to hit join. And as soon as I do that, my phone switched over to the captioning area. Now it hasn't started captioning yet. You'll see nothing happening here yet. But as soon as I hit the microphone here, it should start captioning as I start speaking. And you can see it there on the screen. It also shows it on my screen as well. And eventually it will start to split the conversation up into smaller sections. Now, if you wait too long, what will happen is it'll eventually turn the microphone off. So it has this auto off function as well. So you want to make sure that you don't have these really long pauses, otherwise it will just turn off the microphone. Now, what's happening over here is I'm going to leave the microphone on over here. And I can go over here and there's a few buttons that are at the top here. So the first thing I'm going to do is hit pause because I want to be able to demonstrate what's happening. Now what's interesting is the captioning is still going on over here on my phone. The captioning is still going on, but over here it has been paused. This is great for students who maybe need a little extra time to be able to um, check things. And so the other thing that goes together with that is they can enlarge the font. I'll start with that. And then they can switch to highlighting. So in here I can actually go in and I can choose a highlighting. So like a yellow highlighter, which is the most common. And you can actually highlight a section and it will auto, it will keep that there. Okay. So interesting so far, I'm going to hit resume and it should pick up automatically to where I actually have left off. So now let's go see what happens now with this particular caption. Now that I'm done, I'm going to stop this it stopped. And so now what's going to happen is I'm going to, you notice at the bottom here, it says captions transcript saved. I'm going to close this. And I'm going to refresh this page just because I'm on the online version. Actually, now it's popped up automatically, but sometimes it doesn't pop up. So I usually refresh I can hit transcripts and there it is date and transcript. And it says it hasn't been saved yet. No problem. It's just synchronizing right now. I am going to refresh it because I found oftentimes that if I refresh with the transcripts, it'll come up and there it is. And you'll notice something It has the highlighting section as well. So whatever I highlighted over there, it transferred over here. And now it's just regular text. So of course it could be edited as well too. So this makes it really handy for things like, for example, students who have to miss a class, but you want to be able to have something, or maybe you have someone who's hard of hearing, or you have somebody who maybe wants to translate it because that's another function that this has is that you can actually also go in and in the live captions, 
you can change it so that it will translate automatically into a different language. So I'm going to keep that same one on. I'm going to enter in that same code. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the captions language now to French. So I'm going to go down here, choose French and hit join. Now, now I'm going to put on my microphone here and it should start captioning in French even though I'm speaking in English. So auto translate. So this might be helpful for some situations where you need to be able to um, communicate with someone again who doesn't speak in the same language as you do. You can change the speaking language and the transcript language to two different things and then you end up with captioning. That's live captioning in the language that you've chosen. So I'm going to just stop that. And so you can see that I have a now French translated text. Now, I can't speak for the quality of the translation. I have found that with simple language, it works really well for most things. As you start to get into idiomatic phrases and things like that, of course, things fall apart. So you have to be careful of that. But same thing is going to happen here. I'm going to close this. And what will happen is the transcript would then appear as well, too. Now, remember, back here, I had a thing where I had a QR code. Now, if you were to scan that QR code or you wanted to um, go directly and use an online version with that same code, there is the translator.microsoft.com. And you can actually type in the same five letter code put that in here. I can put in my name and I can join a conversation. You can actually start as well. Starting um, requires that you use uh, Microsoft, Facebook or Google account, but you don't have to install the app, which is interesting. So I'm going to hit join conversation and it's going to go through and talk about how it functions. I'm not going to use my mic, so I'm not going to test my mic. And what instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this on here and we're going to be able to see a live transcription again. Now, if I was to switch it to French, what was interesting with this one is, is that it will show you both the English and the French one above the other. And so that makes it a lot easier for be able to see both and see how the translation works as well too. This is an online version. So if um, somebody doesn't have OneNote or doesn't have the app, this is another way of doing it as well too. So a few little cool functions in regards to OneNote and Microsoft Translator integrating together and giving you some captions um, that you can then use in your classroom. So hopefully that helps you. Hopefully it gives you some ideas about what you can do with that in your classroom. And you can invite your students to be able to use it together as well.